This right here. It tidy cats. Come get it. Anyway, I'm gonna throw down some uh, cat litter on this oil spill here. Um, I want to get underneath, and I know those bolts will come loose already because I tried the other day. Uh, not all of them, but what I want to do is I want to take my torque wrench and I want to see at what foot pounds they actually start turning. Uh, you have, I believe it's half inch that is on your dry shaft and nine sixteenths that is on your carrier. So I'm gonna uh, get the torque wrench and I'll set it and start turning it and well, I'm gonna start setting it higher and higher until I actually see those bolts turn and I'll just make a mental note and write it down um, at what torque they actually turn at. So. Uh, I know there are specs and stuff like that, but I'm just curious to see what they break at um, whenever you're taking them off. Unfortunately, the video that I had of me removing the uh, the carrier and the sill um, somehow it got got deleted. Um, God, that that sucked. But uh, anyway, um, it took, um, I tried these at 50 foot pounds, uh, they didn't turn. I went up to 60 and they turned. So anywhere between 55 and 60 foot pounds is what these on the uh, carrier seal were uh, torqued at. Right now I'm gonna work on getting out this seal right here. I had already started kind of banging on it, but it's gonna, uh, get a screwdriver hammer uh, kind of tap on that get that lip on up and uh, and pop her on out all right so so far I've made my way almost all the way around on this thing before she actually started even wanted to come out but I mean after something I guess sits for 50 something years I don't blame her she's finally right there though Bury him back in there. All right, I'll get the new one. I'll get this cleaned up with the new one and, uh, and get it installed. bearings still look really good. I said this truck only has 53,000 miles on it. No reason to go spend any extra money. All right, I'm gonna try something uh, unconventional. Um, I've heard other people talk about there's a spring in here, right, that keeps this gasket um, uh, squeezing on your uh, your, your yoke uh, shaft. Um, but this little spring, sometimes they say when you're banging on this, trying to put it back in, um, it's possible sometimes that spring may pop out. Well, what I'm gonna do is I got some dye electric grease and we use this a lot offshore um, on a lot of things and uh, I'm gonna use it here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna and this this grease it will disperse easily in oil and stuff like that it, it won't stay there and it'll it'll go away um, if you got like big gears like this with bearings and stuff like that this is not gonna harm anything now if something's very uh, small for hydraulics and stuff if you have something that is uh, very fine uh, using hydraulics and it has small orifices and stuff there's a different type of uh, grease it's a dial corning number four for like o-rings and seals and stuff and that right there 
uh, that's perfect in those applications. This is kind of the equivalent, I guess, of like um, 111. And uh, I, I, I like this stuff. So I'm going to go ahead. What I'm going to do is I'm uh, I'm going to put some of that in here. And I'm also going to put a little right on the edge here just to help that seal go in a little bit easier. Just getting everything reassembled after we uh, just installed this uh, the seal. How did you get that, that chunk out? Of, you you, did, you pulled the whole you pulled the whole rear end out. Uh, I just pulled this out of the rear end. Oh, you just pulled this. Yes, sir. Pulled well, that chunk all in both all the way around. That's a bitch to pull it out. Yeah, I yeah. No, <laughs> no. I was do I was just gonna. Nah, this is all that I needed to do. Yeah. Sometimes I just don't want to go too smooth. No. Yeah, I had a little trouble getting that off actually whenever yeah, I was taking it out. And I don't know why. I mean, it didn't seem like anything was was odd about it, you know. Yeah. Now we're having a little trouble bringing this yoke all the way down. So we're just going to finish uh pushing it in with the uh the nut. Yeah, the nut will push it in. <laughs> But like I said, I know uh, I got the the socket and everything. So if we need to like slowly torque, we'll like tighten it and then check. We can, you know. They said they said I think with the the used bearings, it should be 15 inch pounds. I had to grind some. I can tell. You can tell just by doing it, huh? Well, I'm gonna I'll I'll, I'll see I'll I'll check you too on it. And <laughs> Because it takes a little bit to get the crush washer to start crushing, yeah. correct? Yeah. That impact will crush it. Okay, okay, pulled it in. So, what if we do... All right, I had to cut the video short uh, yesterday. Um, uh, basically, what would happen, uh, we were going ahead and we were putting on, we were tightening up, uh, trying to crush that uh, that sleeve. Um, that, that didn't appear to be happening. Um, it started actually stripping the... Uh, stripping threads here uh, because it was so tight to try and crush so um the guy who i had helped me yesterday uh he's been an auto mechanic his entire life he basically took the crush sleeve the old one put it back in um actually ran back to my house because he asked me to come get the old 
the old nut, but he still used the the new one that I bought that already had a Loctite on it. But he asked me to come back. <laughs> so I came back to my house, and whenever I got back to his, um, he had already had this together and crushed, and he already, the thing was, right? I mean, same thing, just him. He just, he did it by feel. He didn't use no torque wrench or anything. But I actually went back and I actually took my torque wrench that I had bought, and I was like, well, I'm going to double check you just to make sure that everything is what it is. And this thing was set exactly at 15 uh, inch pounds. So, I mean, I couldn't really. I was like, okay, all right. I was like, is it okay to reuse that crush sleeve? He's like, if it works, yes, absolutely. So, and, uh, and it did. So, right now, um, he had also recommended... Um, on this spacer, he recommended putting a uh, little gasket sealant. Put some here. Well, basically on both sides, right? Put some on here, put this on, and then put some on top of this whenever you do reinstall it. And he said it gives it an extra security should somehow it want to leak past that seal a little bit right here. Yeah, and we also we changed out this gasket. Um, I said, all right. He's a kept. That's what we we do. And he's like, uh, I've reused crush washers in the past. He's like, that's what we had to do uh, growing up. And uh, and we haven't had no no problems before. So yeah, right now I'm a, I'm gonna clean this up of any burrs and stuff, and I'll get this mounted back on here with some some gasket maker and stuff, and then I'll move on to uh, installation. All right, something else that I'm trying to do, uh, just besides trying to put some Permatex uh, sealant on on here in this uh, this spacer, um, I haven't seen nobody else do it, but it kind of made sense in my head, right? Uh, like I said, I'm just being unconventional with things. Um, where you do have your um, your seal, um, where you hammer it in and everything. Um, yeah, it is seated, right? It's seated right on top of that lip, right? But between the top lip here and right here, there is a little space. So what I'm thinking is if somehow, um, because your painted surface that is on that gasket um, that goes for it just metal to metal, uh, that painted surface is meant to um, stop any... Uh, oil from coming out right it's it's its own type of sealant well i'm just kind of taking a little bit of the the gasket sealant and just filling that little void see this is this is flush that that's flush i know it doesn't look like it but that's flush and there's just this little space so i'm just kind of filling that little space all the way around with some gasket sealant just in case somehow um it leaks past the uh the the seal on the outside from the metal to metal contact if it tries to leak by well now it has to now it has to bypass this also so all right so what i just did here um i applied a thin membrane of uh, a little bit of gasket sealant um, on the other side of the spacer uh, just took the spacer Put it down. I mean, there's only there's only one way the spacer could go on here, and you can see the the shape um, of it how it it fits. But I applied a thin membrane, I put it down there, put the screws back in just so it lines up perfectly, and I'm gonna let that sit on there. Then I'll come back and uh, clean up this top one more time. Put the same thing. I'll put a very light membrane on this. And, uh, and get this thing put back in my, my truck. All right, before I uh, put this carrier back in, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna suck out all the all the old fluid in here, all the old gear oil, and um, clean up this surface and. Um, I'll actually apply a little bit of uh, 
gasket seal on this surface um, instead of it being on the differential. I mean, on the uh, yeah, on the differential carrier uh, seal. And um, yeah, hopefully I can I can get uh, get everything reinstalled. And I read it took me like I said um, a sixty foot pounds to get these bolts moving, but from what I read um, from uh, was it uh, Alps Garage? And the guy seems like he knows what he's doing. Um, me, not so much, right? Not no professional at anything that I'm doing. I just do it. But he uh, he said it was around 30 to 35 foot pounds. So I'll go with 35 foot pounds around here and uh, and get that all locked back in. Okay, she she's sucking now. I got some uh, I got some of this gasket maker right around here I'm just gonna kind of smooth that out nicely almost like a painting now like I said this ain't no it's not one of the primary seals it's just uh, extra um, reassurance and also with this dye electric grease what I did is I took it and put it right on the inside where that o-ring is gonna go and right before I do slip that on, I'll take a little bit of oil and rub it in here too. Because that dye electric grease with oil gets extremely slippery. Um, a lot more slippery than just putting oil in here and putting in your O-ring. That way you keep that O-ring from uh, buckling on itself or uh, un unrolling out of the uh, seat that it's in. So... All right, while that uh, while that gasket maker is on there, um, solidifying itself, I'm not gonna let it just gonna let it get tacky. Um, another recommendation that was made by uh, my friend, and he's like I said, he's been doing this forever. He's 88 years old, and this man has done and seen it all. Uh, he actually recommended going on to here uh, to actually get some axle grease and lightly coat this right here. Um, that way, uh, when you do first start your truck and everything and you run it, it's well protected. And, uh, that was just something that he recommended. So I'm going to roll with it. Same thing that he recommended on putting, um, gasket sealant on this outer ring here for the spacer. So I really can't argue with somebody who's been doing it their entire life. So I'm going to put a little bit on here and I'll take this. And uh, we'll get this thing installed.
and put a little Loctite onto these bolts. And I go on here and give them a little time and start setting because I'm going to be putting this on very soon. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. So then I'll be torquing this down to 35 foot pounds once I do get it on in. All right, let's bring this onto the truck. All right, it's just now I'm starting to get a little tacky. That's fine by me. Um, I did put a very extremely light coat on the other surface that's going to be uh, mounting to that very very light I uh, already have my where I marked it here and my other mark is right up here so I know this has to go in this way right here so sorry if I'm blocking you Sliding which way? Okay. to bring you in still not completely flush on that let's get this out um this ain't the best thing to be doing lying down trying to hold this thing up while you're getting it in but um the way i did is i i went and i just undid my parking brake and i was able to as i put this in as I rotate it, it seemed like it wanted to rotate nicely this way as the truck backed up. So um, as I slid it in that way, the truck backing up, it kind of helped it guide it in. And uh, I still wasn't able, and I'm still working on it, but the flange here of the carrier, um, I had had like um, a quarter of an inch, maybe a little more of space in between it because I still needed to bring that seal in. So what I'm doing is I'm just slowly uh, working uh, these bolts um, cross pattern just by hand with uh, my 9 sixteenths uh, very slowly. So I'll bring that all the way in and once that's all the way in then I'll torque it down to 35 foot pounds. All right, that's the next day. Um, what I did is I let everything just set in place from, you know, all your, uh, all of your Loctite and other sealants and other stuff that I've done. That way I just give it a day before I put oil in this thing to, uh, really cure. Um, but yesterday I did, after I waited, uh, probably waited two, two hours and I came back and I retorqued, um, <clears throat> all of these nine sixteenths bolts to uh to 35 foot pounds um as per alf's garage so thank you alf even though you probably never watched this video but uh, i'm just in the process now of filling this i'm using 80w90 uh 
gear of oil. And uh, I was told by uh, the guy who gave me a hand yesterday, um, he said, if you hear any whining and stuff, yeah, it's usually because this is loose. Um, and if this isn't loose and you, and you still hear some kind of noise in your rear end, he actually said, uh, what they used to do, they used to use 140 weight oil in these and not 80W90. Um, cause that was the first thing he asked me. He's like, do you have 140 weight oil? I said, uh, no, sir. As for spec, I believe these are 80W90. He's like, yeah, yeah, I think you're right. But he's like, he's like, I know some people, uh, who still use the 140 weight. So just FYI. It almost seems like these trucks could take almost anything that you throw at them. As long as it has oil in it. It's close to whatever viscosity that it needs. Okay, well, I'm not going to sit here and bore you with me filling this thing. But you get the idea. All right, so I finally finished filling this thing. It took uh, it took just about three quarts to fill this this bad boy. Um, I haven't looked to see what the actual specs are for filling it, but uh, it's still it. I did it till it started running out of the hole, and then just let it finish draining whatever it wanted to, um, and then I capped it back after it stopped dripping. Um, now. Even before, whenever I had this thing, it was uh, it was sitting here. Even with oil, it would just drip before. So, so far, that's that's a good sign that it's not dripping. But the ultimate test will be definitely going down uh, the road and checking everything. Um, I can only cross my fingers on that. <laughs> so, but um, one last tip before I end this video, obviously. Um, in the back here, this is a whole different, uh, oh, let me get my light back here, sorry about that. Good, all right. So, obviously this end, right, you have your, your, um, your U-joints where they're free right here, and you have U-bolts that hold them in. Um, the advice that the, that my friend had given me, um, he just said, once you do put this in, I, and obviously, yes, I got my marks all lined up. And from what I understand, you just want everything, supposedly some dry shafts are balanced and everything like that. And you want everything just lined up. So I got my marks where everything's going to go in. But he was just saying, when you tighten up these U-boats, make sure they are done equally all around. Like tighten everything by hand. Then he was like, hey, go like half a turn on each one and just make sure they are tightened the same amount. So that's what I'm gonna work on right now. Get this back in, get this tightened up and uh, and cross my fingers and, and go for a joyride. <clears throat> All right, so uh, put Loctite also on these so, um, and make sure that you also have your, um, you have your, uh, lock washer in addition to everything. But yeah, use a little bit of Loctite. And, uh, I'm just going to go by feel more than anything. So tighten it all the way down by hand as much as I could. And then I'm just going to go until it feels snug. Because obviously you can't tighten these down too much because apparently it looks like you'd, you'd end up crushing the, uh, the U-joint. So I'm just going to try and kind of do the same amount of turns and what I think is right. And just kind of go by feel. Quarter turn there. Quarter turn. I tried, I wanted to try and get my torque wrench in here. But there's not enough room and I don't have no crow's feet. So that sucks. Now I'm starting to feel some resistance there. 
Starting to feel resistance there. Feeling good. I need better light for you. Yeah, feeling some tension there. I'm gonna leave that there. Not gonna go too crazy on this. I don't think you need to as long as it's very, very snug and that lock washer is down in place. Then I have locked tight with that, so that should be good and hopefully not put a whole lot of pressure on them bearings. But uh, I hope this video will help y'all in some kind of way um it was definitely a, a more of a challenge than i thought it was gonna be so but thank y'all for watching i appreciate it all right and one more thing i forgot to mention and i just did it and i man i wanted to get it on film but it's nothing to talk about really it's not our show right it's, it's pretty simple um the other thing that you do after you finish um doing your uh your opinion and resetting everything um, jack up your rear end chalk your front and get your your vehicle running first before you bring it on the road to go um, it helps sling that oil around and stuff like that before you actually get on the road and start putting some real uh, torque on your uh, your wheels so like I said that was another recommendation by that old man so but just a uh, FYI on that so I jacked her up um, lifted one well actually I lifted uh, the entire back truck um, went a little bit and then I independently lifted each side of the wheel so one side would stay down one was up so the one that was up would only rotate whether that does anything I have no idea but anyway ran a little bit now I'm gonna bring her out on the uh, on the highway and see how she does wish me luck